Welcome to today's session delivered by National Sports Charity Street Games and our academic partners at Loughborough University. My name is Graham Helm, National Partnerships Manager within the SAFER team here at Street Games. And during this session, we're really looking to share the work we've been involved in, building an evidence base for the effective use of sport. Really looking to articulate the contribution sport can make in the context of vulnerable young people, youth offending and serious youth violence. Well, who are Street Games? Street Games, as I say, are a national sports charity that exists to support that whole sector at community level of what we call locally trusted organisations. Those providers that are using the power of sport to really engage young people at community level have the permission of the community to do so. And we seek to listen, to learn, to build collaborations, to advocate for, and to fuel those organisations. It's as part of that work that over the last six years, we've been working hand in glove with our partners at Loughborough University to really build that understanding about the contribution those providers are making, to really start to articulate at a systems level how we could realise the ambition of that community sports sector and how to build those robust connections between partners and community sport. Street Games gives access to those locally trusted organisations and unparalleled access to groups of young people at community level. And then working with Loughborough University with that academic insight, with that rigour and with that real passion they have for developing the learning and more importantly translating the learning to build resources, to build knowledge, to build insight and share back with that sector. And we really do hope that that work comes to life during this session. With that in mind, I'd like to welcome from Loughborough University, Dr. Karen Walpole. Thank you, Graham. So I'm going to start by thinking about the contribution that sport can make to local policing. Sport is well placed to take on this role because it's used to working in partnership with a large range of local agency. Indeed, work with young people in this context needs a multi-agency approach. So what is sport able to offer? Well, it can offer positive activity to young people at risk of or involved in serious youth violence. It can help to prevent and reduce serious involvement in serious youth violence, and it can support a child-centered policing approach. But sport is more than this. It's more than just prevention. As one chief constable said to me recently, it's about offering a young person a positive opportunity. And that is really important as well for young people who are under the radar, who are invisible, who perhaps aren't in the formal criminal justice system. And yet they might still be involved in serious youth violence. So to offer them a positive opportunity in sport, perhaps as part of a referral system, perhaps as part of a diversionary system, um, process, then that has real potential to support young people. And sport also can help to support young people by signposting them back into the system through the referral process and on into statutory and also voluntary um, support systems. For, so for example children's services and CAMS to make sure that young people do get the support that they need when they're involved in sport in local areas. So what is our approach? Well we have three key principles for sport in this context and they all complement child-centred policing. So firstly, child-first approach, which is already embedded in the youth justice system. And it's based on the needs of a child, engagement with the young person, and it's about giving them a voice, empowering them, and offering them normalising activities. And sport can support all of those different approaches. It's also based on the needs and vulnerabilities of a child. So really responding to their often multiple vulnerabilities, taking a trauma-informed approach and making sure that they get the right support. And finally, a pro-social approach as well, built on the strengths and the potential of the child, not building on their risks or on their deficits. So just looking at the diagram um, in front of you with antisocial identity on one side, pro-social identity on the other side, so what we're looking to do is to use sport 
to support the young person's journey from having an antisocial identity where they're perhaps involved in serious violence, part of a gang in county lines, and supporting them to make that journey towards that more pro-social identity. And that's where they can make positive choices and decisions. They can have a positive status, for example, perhaps by taking part in volunteering in their sports programme, becoming a young leader, getting respect from other young people at the session and from adults around them. They can be involved in um, positive activities and really focused on the future. So they have aspirations and hope. So they really have a sense of who I am and where I belong in the world. And I know where my future is going to lead to. I know what I want to do in my life. So thinking about a potential role that sport can have then as a form of prevention, what are the benefits that sport can bring to a young person? Well, firstly, it can bring that fun, positive activity for a young person. And we know that enjoyment is at the heart of engagement for a young person. That's what attracts them to sport and that's what, it keep, what keeps them coming to sport as well. And sport, of course, also helps to keep them healthy, giving them um, healthy routines, healthy lifestyles, engagement in physical activity, and it can give them not just a healthy routine, a regular routine, but it can give them a safe space, a safe supervised space, both outside the home and in the local community. And it can be an escape from stressful situations. Sport can also provide young people with positive relationships with adults and peers. So positive relationships with adults at sports projects, perhaps a um, one of the sports coaches or perhaps an, an older volunteer and it's somebody who can listen to them, talk to them, somebody who has their back, somebody who cares about them and can help them to reflect. Perhaps somebody who is a mentor to them and it can help young people to also develop new friendships, positive friendships with other young people at the session. And it can help them to really have a, that sense of belonging, that sense of a second family at the sports project, and perhaps an alternative to that sense of family and belonging that they might get um, as part of a gang. So this would give sport the opportunity to give them a much more positive relationship. Sport also has the opportunity to provide young people with the skills and the opportunities to make better choices and decisions in their lives. So being in sport, taking part in sport, volunteering can give them new roles, new roles as, as young leaders, new possibilities, new ways of trying things out and dealing with difficult situations. New skills such as listening, decision making, time management, team working, negotiating. They can all be difficult skills, but within a sports environment with a trusted adult, that can make it a real possibility to try them out, to really find those teachable moments and to really help them to support, you know, that, that feeling of increased confidence, self-esteem, the resilience, all those positive benefits that sport can bring to a young person. So how can we make sure that sport can be used to benefit young people in the best way possible? Well, it's really important to make sure that it matches the needs of the young person. And to do this, we take a public health approach, primary, secondary and tertiary levels. And that really helps us to make sure that a young person gets to get involved in the right type of sports activity. They access the right level of expertise and that the right level of resources are in place to support them. So. When you look at the diagram in front of you, that's our theory of change for the use of sport as a positive outcome for young people in the context of serious youth violence. And what we try to do is to make sure that the sports activities supported by the enablers, those things that really make the sports activity work well for the young person, are really matched at the levels of primary or secondary or tertiary level, so that they're all designed differently to the needs of the young people so that that gives the best opportunity to have the outcomes and that we want for that positive change for those young people. So looking at the primary, secondary and tertiary levels in a bit more detail now at the diagram in front of you. So on the left hand side, we've got the primary level. 
which is really designed for children with a low level of needs, who need a low level of support. And for them, the best kind of sport are regular quality sessions where they can come along, play sport on a regular basis with trusted adults, have opportunities to get involved in volunteering, perhaps some summer holiday programmes as well, but it's good fun sport, keeping them active, positive experiences. Moving along then into the middle section, the secondary section, which is really for early intervention. That's really for vulnerable young people with more challenging lives who need that extra support, extra resource. So that's really about targeted sport programmes, targeted sports sessions, perhaps some group work, one-to-one -one sport based mentoring with a trusted adult as a mentor and really building on their strengths and giving them pos positive opportunities. For example, through volunteering, sports leadership. On the right hand side is the tertiary level. And that's really for young people already involved in serious youth violence. And, and for some of them, they might be in a secure estate or it might involve rehabilitation. But we would suggest that sport at this level really requires sports projects to have significant levels of expertise from their staff and significant access to resource and a holistic approach as well to the young person. So they need to rely more on partnerships with other agencies. And sports programmes in this tertiary level are really about targeted one-to-one -one work, perhaps group work, but um, very much targeted um, and with significant resource. So now to illustrate these levels, let's hear from the Street Games Network. Hi, my name's Poz. I work for Street Games across community sport. So typically these clubs are, they're in the community, they're at neighbourhood level, uh, they're known to young people, they're, they're part of their community. Um, so they're familiar, they're accessible and they provide something that a young person wants in terms of sport, physical activity, whatever that may be. Um, but more than that, whilst that's a great engagement opportunity, a great, great tool to kind of engage young people with, uh, that then gets built on in terms of opportunities for volunteering, training, uh, qualifications and developmental in terms of that lifelong learning. Um, but what sometimes when you talk to community grassroots clubs um, uh, about violence reduction agenda, they often feel a little bit uncomfortable or, or scared that this isn't their area. Um, but they already do the engagement. They already offer uh, access uh, and opportunities to, to young people through what, through what they do. What I would say is that they don't necessarily look at it through a diversionary lens, but they, they should be recognised for the value that they bring to young people uh, in, the, in their communities. Hi, my name is Paul Smith and I've worked for the range of age range from four year olds, teenagers and adults for over 17 years. And the impacts of some of the sport that I can give you guys, and this is what I want to share with you, is absolutely critical. Uh, one of the things that get involved with a local sports club or a martial arts centre, it's going to keep you off the street, number one. It's going to keep you positive thinking, guys. It's going to keep you fit and active and it's going to make you more productive than hanging around on the streets. The key thing about hanging around on the street, guys, it's going to tear you down routes that you possibly wouldn't have liked to have gone down or it may get you into unnecessary trouble. So my message to you guys is take up a sporting activity with positive attachments, guys. Be good, keep yourself safe and really think about the message that I've delivered today to you. My name is Paul Smith and it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Take care, keep safe and keep positive, guys. See you for now. Hello, my name is Beth Warriner and I'm the Senior Development Officer for Youth Engagement at Bolton Wanderers Community Trust. We offer a wide range of different engagement opportunities for young people, including targeting provisions uh, such as our one-to-one -one mentoring programme or our group mentoring programme where we work with mainstream schools, we work in SEND schools, we work with the youth offending team and we work in pupil referral units as well. We also offer a wide range in universal provision, for example our Premier League Kicks programme which aims to engage young people aged 8 to 18 in community sport so that doesn't ne just necessarily have to be football, it could be basketball, badminton, boxing, dance. Uh, we offer a, a kind of wide range of different opportunities there for young people. 
we're also obviously naturally really think that sport is a great tool and a great hook for young people we think that the badge of, of Bolton Wanderers Football Club um, is a great draw even if they don't support Bolton Wanderers which surprisingly not many of them do um, and we, we think that it's a really good opportunity to get young people doing something positive increasing their physical activity um, and reducing antisocial behaviour. So how are street games taking this work forward? Well, at a systems level, we work with a number of violence reduction units and offices with the Police and Crime Commissioner to really build that trust and confidence in the role that community sport can play. To take a broad look at the sector, at its readiness to deliver, about what it's delivering, where it's delivering it, who it's delivering it to, and more importantly, that level of intervention, that primary, secondary and tertiary and allow those system partners to look at it at regional, at local authority or place-based level. We work alongside partners and providers, the deliverers of community sport, using the theory of change to really support providers to intentionally design quality interventions that are robust in understanding the level, that are robust in having the right staff with the right capabilities, with the right confidence and to really build that all important outcome narrative. So clear outputs and outcomes for what work is being carried out. And perhaps most importantly, we constantly check our work through the experience of the young person. What does this journey look like for a young person navigating through the system? Either through just attending a community sport provider session or perhaps being supported or referred just to take that step of confidence into a provision. What does that offer look like? How does it support young people? What do they see? What do they experience? What do they feel are their achievements from being there? As we support young people right up and down the country on that journey towards a pro-social identity. We'd really welcome follow-up conversations if anything that we've talked about during today's session has been of use. Please use these contact details to get in touch. Thanks very much.